we humans have a tendency to take wild places and tame them with bridges and dams. We build sprawling cities. Then we build freeways so we can get around. And monumental buildings, just because. In our experience, there are few cultures that have been shaped by their environments rather than the other way around. I call these symbiotic cultures, and I offer these three. The Pantanal in Brazil, Inley Lake in Myanmar, and the Aborigines of the Kimberley Coast in Australia. The Pantanal is the world's largest tropical wetland. It sprawls over 60,000 square miles. Roughly 80% of the floodplain are submerged during rainy seasons, nurturing a diverse collection of aquatic plants and a large number of animal species. 99% of the land in the Pantanal is privately owned. There are 2,500 farms and ranches and up to 8 million cattle. But large parts of the Pantanal remain wild places. Thanks to harsh natural conditions, governmental regulations, and the emergence of ecotourism as a revenue source. The rarest of animals in the wetlands are the marsh deer and the giant river otter. Endangered or threatened species include the hyacinth macaw and the giant anteater. Some common species in the Pantanal include the capybara, the ocelot is common, but due to its nocturnal habits, it's hard to see. The yakari caiman grow up to 10 feet. But this is what we've come to see. The Pantanal is home to one of the world's largest and healthiest jaguar populations. Over 400 bird species can be found in the Pantanal. The people of the Pantanal call themselves Pantaneros. 250 years ago, the first Europeans explored the area looking for gold. But cattle ranching was the only viable economic activity that matched the unique environment of the Pantanal. European settlers brought Iberian cattle and established estancias. Argentine and Paraguayan gauchos brought their knowledge of cattle. The local indigenous people brought their knowledge and respect for the land and its wildlife. This mix created a culture that is likened to that of the American West. A self-reliant frontier spirit with a love of open spaces and wild places. Here the domestic animals coexist with the wild animals. The Iberian cattle breeds were replaced in the 20th century by Zebu breeds from India. They had a tolerance for the high temperatures and humidity, the seasonal flooding, and the occasional drought. The cowboy is central to the Pantanal culture. They have their own music, Musica Certinesia, which literally means country music. and their own cuisine. This is the traditional cowboy breakfast of rice and sun-dried beef. Terere is a mate drink drunk out of a cow's horn through a metal straw. It's drunk ice cold throughout the day. Ecotourism is relatively new to the Pantanal. It started with sport fishing. When we were at Porto Joffre in 2009, 80% of the guests were sport fishermen. Peacock bass is the fish of choice. They get up to 29 pounds. This one's for fish stories. But when we returned five years later, the numbers had reversed, and the guests were sporting long lenses. And the object of their attentions? Jaguar. 
Inley Lake is a large lake in central Myanmar. In 2015, Inley Lake was recognized as part of UNESCO's World Network of Biosphere Reserves. Large sections of the lake are covered by floating plants, making a great environment for water birds and fish. The lake is central to the culture of the people who live on and around the lake. Shallow canoes are the main mode of transportation. They move goods to market and tourists to the lake's special places. Children learn to handle the canoes at an early age. The boys learn a unique way to paddle. This paddling method allows a fisherman to have both hands free to place the fish trap on the shallow lake bottom and then to spear the fish. When you live on a house built on stilts in the middle of a lake, vegetable gardens require an innovative solution. Mats of vegetation from the lake shore are cut and floated to a convenient location. The mats are staked in place on long poles to allow for the changing water levels in the lake. More vegetation is pulled from the lake bottom to fertilize the floating gardens. The gardens are planted with tomatoes, melons, and squash. A unique product of Inley Lake is a fabric made from the fibers from the lotus plant. The lotus fabric is used to cover the many Buddha statues in the temples around the lake. Weaving is an industry of the women of Indy Lake. They make beautiful silk scarves and neckties for the tourists, as well as traditional ICAT fabrics. There are several different tribes living around the lake. Each has a distinctive dress and way of life. We visited several temples and monasteries around the lake. Being cat people, our favorite was Nong Pichong, also called the Jumping Cat Monastery. Several years ago, a bored monk taught the temple cats to do tricks, and it became a tourist attraction. A new abbot decided that to impose one's will on another sentient being was against Buddhist teachings, and the performances stopped. Now the cats sleep and occasionally steal offerings from the altars and hopefully keep the rodent population down. The people of Inley use their lake environment to create a unique culture. The people are friendly and happy to show how they fish, farm, and weave. The Kimberley is in the northern part of Western Australia. It's slightly smaller than California in area but with a population of about 37,000, and 40% of those are of Aboriginal descent. The Kimberley Coast has no land access for most of its length. The rugged sandstone shore completes the isolation. This is definitely a wild and beautiful place. The creeks, rivers, and billabongs are inhabited by saltwater crocodiles. The offshore islands support breeding colonies of seabirds, Tides can be extreme, with a general range of 30 feet and king tides to 50 feet. That means that there's twice daily feast on the reefs and tidelands. The ancestors of today's inhabitants arrived in the Kimberley about 41,000 years ago. They were isolated until the mid 1700s when Makassan fishermen from today's Indonesia began harvesting and processing sea cucumbers or trade with China, where it's a delicacy. These rock hearths were where the Makessans boiled the sea cucumbers. 
the first Europeans arrived in 1837. This rock art depicts the sailing ships used by English and Dutch explorers. These images are thought to be of Dutch explorers with big hats, beards, and pipes. The Aboriginals don't have a written language, so their history and mythology have been recorded as an oral history, supported by art, music, and dance. The rainbow serpent figures in creation stories across Australia. It's a giver of life by association with water, but can be a destructive force if angry, like a cyclone. The didgeridoo was invented over 1,500 years ago. Today, it's recognized worldwide as a unique and iconic instrument of Australia's Aboriginal people. Clapsticks are another traditional instrument. Dances mimic animal behavior like cassowary, crocodiles, and water buffalo. <laughs> this song sends the meaning, folks. It goes in dancing. And uh, the song is based on the animal itself. Action, reaction. Uh, what they do out in the wild, eh? But uh, there's um, lots of songs that goes with sharp. There's uh, families. They uh, actually um, um, pass down through generations, eh? Before we can visit a rock art site, we have to be purified by the smoke ceremony and our cheeks get some ochre so that the spirit guardians will know that we're okay. We learned a lot about rock art. It's not graffiti. Every site and painting has a name. The Aboriginals believe that the essence of the thing depicted in the paint exists in the painting. So the elder responsible for the site has the responsibility to repaint the images once in his lifetime. Unfortunately, some sites no longer have a custodian and the images are fading away. Our Wawara guide, Robin, explains the Wanjanu. They're the rain spirits. In the dream time, they created the land and the people and continue to influence both. You can tell the Wanjanu part by their halos. Wanjanu are depicted without a mouth because they're so powerful they don't need to speak. And if they had mouths, the rain would never stop. The age of rock art is hard to determine because the pigments are not organic. But there are styles that can give you hints as to the age. The easiest is the contact period, 1700 to 1900, when sailing ships were depicted. The Wanjana period dates back at least 4,000 years. The clothespin figures period may be up to 9,000 years old. The painted hand style may date back to 10,000 years ago. The Guan period, showing people with elaborate dress, may be 12,000 years old. The earliest are naturalistic paintings of fish, plants, and animals. These may be greater than 10,000 years old. At Longi Beach, we visit the sacred site of a great battle in the dream time. Here, the Wuwara believe the land Wanjana fought the sea Wanjana. The fallen warriors are in the sandstone pillars. These three very different cultures have all developed to make the best use of their environment. The Pontaneros live and thrive in the world's largest wetland, coexisting with its wild creatures. The people of Inley Lake use the natural, renewable products of the lake, floating gardens, lotus and other vegetation, and fish. 
The Aboriginal people of the Kimberley have a spiritual bond with their environment. 